Now, an investigation by this program has raised some really serious concerns about the way doctors treat children with behavioural difficulties. We've uncovered a dramatic rise in the number of powerful antipsychotic drugs being prescribed to children, some as young as five. Many psychiatrists question this kind of treatment, and the drugs are known to have potentially serious side effects. This special report is from our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald. Across Britain, growing numbers of children are being prescribed an incredibly powerful class of drug. If you say the drugs aren't working, they'll give you more, stronger drugs. And then you're in that vicious circle. You can't escape it. And no one knows just how much damage they may be doing to these young people. You could be developing a long-term medical disease just by taking these drugs. The drugs in question are antipsychotics, widely used to treat disorders like schizophrenia, psychosis, and some forms of depression, prescribed, in other words, to calm highly disturbed people. These drugs can be, are in fact, life-saving in some patients. But what about children? Because we've discovered that the number of young people being prescribed antipsychotics has rocketed in recent years. So much so that now some of the country's leading psychiatrists are raising the alarm, asking why are they being prescribed and what effect are they having on developing brains? What are you up to over here? At the age of five, this young boy was given antipsychotics to deal with his incredibly distressing behaviour. That included hurting himself. He's autistic and has always struggled to communicate. His parents have given us permission to show this film. By now, he's been taking the drugs for three years. There's been little improvement. Here you can see he's still self-harming. Professor Chris Oliver, an expert in behavioural problems in children, began to work with this young boy. He soon started to suspect something else was at play. But you can see the child's behaviour starting to become more vigorous, starting to kick. The clue was in the boy's behaviour itself. And here you can see him arching his back alongside the vocalisation, and that would strongly suggest to us that he's experiencing pain. In fact, it is highly likely that he was experiencing a uh, bout of reflux at, those, at that time, and after the research had finished and he was treated for the reflux, we saw a significant decrease in some of his self-injurious behaviour. So behaviour not caused by mental illness, but undiagnosed pain from heartburn. Mm -hmm. Professor Oliver believes that some doctors can be too quick to prescribe antipsychotics to young children. I think the first concern is that the evidence base for the use of psychoactive medication for behaviours like self-injury is very, very limited indeed. And secondly, we don't know what the long-term effects of using those medications is. What we've now learned is that Professor Oliver's concern is increasingly shared by a growing number of Britain's most eminent mental health experts. Hi, Victoria. Thank come through. Come through. We've come to see Professor Tim Kendall. He's writing the first ever NHS guidelines for the use of antipsychotics in children and young people. We're not talking about taking paracetamol. Um, these drugs are powerful drugs, and we know that in adults they have a long-lasting effect on people's brains. For some people, that's irreversible. Now, you know, I'd, I'd ask you, if, if, if you had a child, would you think twice even when they had a very severe illness and you know the answer I would give is I think more than twice. But how many children are actually taking this medication? Astonishingly there are no official figures. So Channel 4 News commissioned the country's biggest drug database to crunch numbers from GP surgeries and primary care trusts across the UK. And the result which has stunned the experts Last year, 15,000 children and young people were prescribed antipsychotics, a figure that has doubled in the past 10 years. And that's just from GPs. The numbers for hospital prescribing aren't available. As far as I'm aware, there is no evidence that there's been a doubling in the rate of psychosis. So if there's a doubling in the rate of children being given antipsychotics, that's a worry. 
And why is it a worry? Because of their serious side effects and because nobody knows what effect antipsychotics have on a developing brain. At the age of nine, this young girl was diagnosed with psychosis. She needed treatment. But her father was shocked by what happened to her when she was put on the drugs. Nobody told us about any side effects. They can't remember things. They can't even dress themselves properly. They lose the ability to brush their teeth even. You have to get older hand and walk them everywhere. Their thinking is so muddled, the increase in appetite. She'd eat raw sugar out the packet. She would just go through a bottle of ketchup. It wasn't told to us how dangerous this drug was. There was no monitoring of her being given these drugs in terms of her physical conditions, heart rate, anything like that. Yet doctors are supposed to monitor a child's health when they've been put on antipsychotics. But this confidential NHS study shows the reality is very different. The report asked whether the young people on these drugs are properly monitored for side effects. Its rather disturbing conclusion was that they're not. In fact, it said in many cases there was no evidence of screening whatsoever. At Imperial College in London, we put these points to Professor Peter Tyra, who is a world expert in the use of antipsychotics. The unmonitored prescription of an antipsychotic drug can be a slow fuse to disaster because there are so many adverse effects which are linked to antipsychotic drugs. It affects almost all parts of the body. I think what's shocking me is that you're talking about awful problems, weight gain, diabetes, heart problems, in children. Yes, and this is uh, particularly alarming because, of course, children have got their whole lives ahead of them. For this young girl and her family, things are beginning to improve. She is now responding well to intensive talking therapies, and she is on a changed dosage of a different antipsychotic drug. It's been an incredibly painful and difficult journey for all of us, not least in my daughter's case, because she's the one who's suffered magnitude is far worse than we have. To help children like this, Professor Kendall is writing the new guidelines, but he's encountered a significant problem. Despite requests, none of the drug companies has given him access to their research. I'm appalled by it, absolutely appalled. I mean, uh, you know, it's, my honest view is that this, this data should be available for people such as us who are working on behalf of the NHS, on behalf of you know, patients, parents, uh, on behalf of doctors. We put Professor Kendall's concerns to the body representing British drug companies. They said... The industry is committed to being as open and transparent as possible in its disclosure of information. They added... Any prescription of antipsychotic medicine to children will only occur after careful consideration and risk-benefit assessment by the healthcare professional on a case-by-case -case basis. Not one of the experts says do not ever use antipsychotics in children, but they are now asking fundamental questions. Why are so many young people being prescribed these drugs and what harm is it doing to them? And all the facts and figures behind Victoria McDonald's report there can be found on our website, channel4.com forward slash news.